Burly Cell. Hello everybody and welcome back to Burly Cell. I'm your host Purified and today we're going to take a look at how to use bias tape to bind the edges of your fabric and also how to establish a nice clean corner. Alright, so jumping right in. Uh, if you ever looked at some bias tape, and in this case I'm using quarter inch bias tape, there's going to be one side that's longer than the other. And that's pretty important because that's going to help hide our stitch from the way that we do this. So you can see by my thumb that that one side is just a little bit longer than the other side. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this and unfold it. And we only un need to undo two of the folds, so down the middle and then the short side. So you have a nice flat piece like this. And we're going to lay that on our material. And I'll show you right here. You just kind of butt it up against the edge there. And you're going to sew a stitch right above that fold. And that's going to allow that, that bias strip to fold over the edge of your fabric. And then you'll be able to take the longer end and stitch it over the stitch that you initially sewed to attach it. So jumping right in, I've flattened out the bias tape like I just showed. And I'm going to just set it in place with the, with the presser foot. And I'm going to line it up along the edge of our material. Now once again, this is the short edge of the bias tape unfolded. And we're going to sew right between that short edge's fold and the edge of our fabric. So you want the stitch to be between that fold and the edge of your fabric as close to that short leg's fold as possible. And then you're just going to want to line it up and take your time and do a, a straight stitch all the way down. I'm just using a normal straight stitch. You can pin it if you choose. I chose not to pin it. It takes much, as much time for me to pin as it does for me to just sew at a moderate pace and try to be accurate that way. Uh, I will do some pinning later once I flip this edge over after I have this inside piece sewed and attached. So I'm just going to go down the line here and then we're going to come to the corner. Now the corner's a little bit more tricky but it's not that hard either. And basically we're going to sew all the, almost all the way to the end. You're just going to leave a little bit shy of the very end. And then we're going to fold this in a way that we're going to have a nice mitered corner when you flip it over. So we've got to the edge. And I'll cut this thread here and show you a little bit closer what this is going to look like. But right now you can see that we've got that attached and this just folds right over like that. So then later on we'll be able to go over and put a stitch right across there and it's going to look wonderful. So now to get the corner you're going to want to fold this piece coming off straight into a 45 degree angle and then you're going to want to fold it one more time to make it run straight down the next run of your project, the next leg of your project. So you can see I did it in a 45 and now I'm folding it so that it's nice and square with that 45 degree underneath this top fold. So you basically have two folds. You have one fold underneath that's 45 degrees, and then you have one that's 90 degrees. And I'll, here's the finished project, but you can take a better look right here and see what it's supposed to look like. So now that you've got that fold taken place, you can hold it down with your presser foot and then line up your bias tape again and your short edge is still lined up with the edge of your project and you still want to keep that stitch so that it runs all the way down between the fold of the short leg and the edge of your project and here's a different angle and then I, I do a little back and forth here you don't want to do too much because it'll be visible but just to lock the stitch in place I always like to do a little back and forth on the corners and then I'm gonna go ahead and just stitch out the next leg and it's it's pretty simple it's pretty straightforward it takes a little practice to get that fold right but once you've done it a couple times it shouldn't you know it shouldn't be a big deal 
So now we're just going to run down the leg of this side and we're going to come up to another corner and then we're going to go ahead and do the same thing all over again. We've got four corners so we have to do it four times. And then I'm going to show you how to end your bias tape. Basically we started it off on one side. That's where I like to start it, kind of in the middle of, of one of the runs as I call it. Um, you don't want you can't start on a corner if you get want to get a nice corner. So I'll show you how to end your bias tape where you started it, and I'll take you to that part next. All right, so we're finishing our last run here and coming up on our last corner, and you'll be able to see that I started my bias strip right after this corner. So what we're going to do is we're just going to round this last corner and then I'm going to take the bias strip and I'm going to run it maybe an inch past where I started. So you can see my last run here, that's all I've got left and I'm going to run it a little bit past where I started. So I'm sewing it. Um, right now I haven't cut the bias tape yet but where they meet, that inch that overlaps, I'm doing a little back and forth there. And you want to consider maybe a, a spot on your project that's less obvious for this. Um, if there is such a thing on your project where you can back and forth a couple times, you'll have that the two pieces overlapping and you won't be able to notice it much. But now that I'm at that point, I can just cut off my excess bias tape. And now we've went all the way around on the inside of our project. And you can see the next thing that we have to do is just fold this over and attach one more stitch all the way around. And this part's pretty simple. And I showed you this before, but I wanted to show you again. You can see how that 45 degree and then the 90 degree over. And basically when we fold this over here, it's gonna make a very nice mitered corner. There's gonna be a little line running 45 degrees to your project. Let me position this a little bit better so you can see it. There you go. And now we're going to sew this in place and you won't even be able to see the stitches underneath. Now let me show you how to make this corner. Once you get everything flipped over to the other side, uh, you're basically just going to make a, a tuck it in and make a nice 45 degree angle underneath and that'll miter the outside corner for you. And then the part that meets where you started is right here. You can see I overlapped it about an inch. What I like to do is sometimes that underneath piece bulks up a little bit and sticks out. So I don't like that. I want it nice and clean. So what you can do is you can trim that with your scissors and just kind of cut it on a little angle that leads up to the end and then you won't be able to see it and it won't be as bulky and you can just stitch right over it and it should look uh, very clean all that will be there is the little line from where you you know where you start or where you ended your your piece so now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pin this to get it started uh, you can go around the whole thing and pin it if you like uh, I found that when you get these started like this it's just a little easier to pin this part of it just a couple pins on one side is all you really need. And I'm going to start this just shy of the corner. So I'm going to start it down from the, little, the corner a little bit. I'm going to fold the corner like I showed you before just so I've got the right length you know, and my, my bias strip is set up correctly. But I'm not actually going to sew that corner yet. I'm going to do, I'm going to start down a flat piece and I'm just going to get the bias tape started so that it covers that initial stitch that we made. That's why you have the long side um, that folds over like this. So you've got enough distance, enough length on the bias strip leg to cover your initial strip stitch. So it's only gonna look like you did one stitch to attach the whole thing. So I'm gonna go down this leg and I'm gonna attach it. I'm just gonna sew another straight stitch. I suppose you could do a zigzag stitch if you like. If you wanna get a little bit more decorative, you could try other types of stitches. But I'm just going for a basic straight stitch on this and now we're going to sew it down the leg and then we're going to come to the corner 
and I'll show you how to do that. I like to drop the needle and do a little pivot. So coming up on the corner right now, I'm, I'm folding it on that 45 degree angle, just tucking it under. And I'm gonna go ahead and finish it off and I'm gonna get to the end. And I'm gonna just put the needle in the lower position right on the corner as best as I can so that I can lift the presser foot and then I can go ahead and turn my project 45 degrees and I'll be able to pretty much pick up right where I left off. It, it can be a little tricky. Um, you can always raise the needle and then raise the presser foot a tad to shift your project over, which is what um, I'm, I'm probably gonna have to do here. But you can see I dropped the needle, raised the presser foot. I, I, I just did a little pivot turn, use that needle as the access point. And then I need to move it over just a tad now I can drop the needle, see where see where it is, and it's right, right on my my nice clean corner there. And now I can just go down and finish this leg of the project. And when I come to the next three corners, I'm basically going to do the same thing. And I also um, tend to do a little back and forth stitch there too, just maybe one or two back, and then a, you know you're going to go forward. Um, over it again just to just to keep the corner nice and secure so that uh, it doesn't come undone and then we're just gonna go down and now you can see I'm not really even pinning anymore uh, I'm pretty comfortable with it the bias tapes covering my initial stitch and it, it's looking great now because we, we sewed the other side the way we did when we come to the end of our project and you flip it over, you're only going to be able to see the bobbin stitch from from this because the other stitch is hidden inside as we folded it over. So it's going to look really clean. And now we're at another corner. Basically, just do the same thing. We drop the needle, used it as a pivot point, folded it over on our 45 degrees, and now we can just go ahead and stitch down the length of our project. Well, that's really it, folks. I think anybody can do it. It just takes a little bit of practice. You don't need a fancy foot to do this. I do have a bias tape uh, binding foot, and I'll maybe post a video of that sometime. I'll also post a video of what this project is. But thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions or comments, please leave, your, please leave those below. Please subscribe. I'm Purified, and thanks for watching Burly So.